politics, 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 and a lot of woke stuff we'll get to in a second. But um, you've always been very clear that people were in the Republican Party, they weren't going to move on from Donald Trump. Iowa, most likely New Hampshire, has proven that. Um, in the end, it seems like it's just unfinished business. I mean, people that have been copying it from their friends and family since 2015 were hardly going to change their mind when they had one last chance to vote for him. The thing that you see in the media, Paul, is that a lot of them never talk to, know, meet with a Trump voter. <laughs> and if you, you know, my job is as a journalist just to stay open-minded to them all and see what, what, what is the world telling me? Not... Who am I rooting for? I am very able to separate that from what is the world telling me? And the world has been telling me and everyone who's willing to listen very clearly that Republicans love Donald Trump, that the Republican Party is his party and has been for quite some time now. And that while there are still some who don't like Donald Trump within the Republican Party, they are a clear minority. And while it was a divided field, it was always clear that Trump was going to have more votes than any other singular person. We've won almost every single poll in the last three months against crooked Joe Biden. Almost every poll. And she doesn't win those polls. And she doesn't win those. This is not your typical victory speech. Now that he's left with just one other person standing, and that person isn't anything like Trump in her policies and her approach to anything, uh, there's just not enough votes to put her over the top. So it's very clear who is going to win this domination. And the only real big question left is who's going to win the next election, which comes in November. Uh, we talked about it at the time that I thought DeSantis was dead on arrival because of his position on abortion when it comes to a general election. But obviously he was dead on arrival because he wasn't Donald Trump. Um, why do you think he particularly flamed out the way that he did? Because, look, while Trump was most likely going to end up being the nominee, normally there's a bit of a fight that at least you don't get down to two by the second state to vote. You know, I don't think anybody could have done it because Trump is just too big a character. If, if DeSantis had run in 2012, he would have been the nominee and he might have won. Really, uh, before the walking ball of charisma entered, somebody who was just a normie could win. Uh, but Trump is just too big a personality, too big an entertainer, too big a star. He does suck up the oxygen in, in any room, and it's very hard to, to overcome that as a normal human. And Ron DeSantis, if anything, had a little bit less than your average amount of charisma. Behind the scenes, he can do it. You know, I was saying on my show today, when I met with him, he was actually very funny. He did an impression of Trump, which was spot on and very funny, like legitimately made me laugh with it. He never legitimately made me laugh during the entire campaign. He like, wouldn't show that side of himself. And I really wonder whether it's like you go to Yale as like a star baseball player and then you go to Harvard Law School and then you join the JAG Corps, you know, the Navy lawyers like the Tom Cruise, Top Gun lawyers. Um, you come out, you run for Congress, you know, you just have a perfect track record in life. Whether you become risk averse in a unique way that's not great for politicians you know you don't want to take certain risks you don't want to put yourself out there you don't want to use humor you don't want to be too self-deprecating because you have a certain image of yourself that you need to maintain to be that harvard guy and i just really think that is desantis and it undermined him if he could have been looser and shown us his real personality which i do believe is looser than he projected not not by a huge margin but there's a delta there he would have done better in a non-Trump year. He never had any chance in a Trump year. Well, also, I mean, it's one thing to be the perfect person to run for Congress in your local area, the perfect person maybe to be the senator, the perfect person maybe to be the governor. But one thing Trump has changed forever is that there's a certain dynamism, looseness, dare I say, that's going to be required uh, in anyone who's eventually going to end up as the nominee. Um, look, again, Donors and the machine has its way, but voters are going to be connected to somebody who they think is going to get in there and rough up the place. Because if there's one thing that polls even worse than Biden is the city of which he lives in, D.C., the concept of D.C. That's exactly right. And the thing about Trump is, even when you know he's lying, when you know he's just saying stuff, you know, like, there's going to be a great plan. Everyone's going to love it on abortion. 
okay, that's, like that's not possible, right? But it's, it's just a line that he uses. I'm gonna be the one to come up with something everyone's gonna love on abortion. Really? What's, uh, are you really? You kind of forgive him because he's got this swagger. Like this is the, I'm speaking of your average Republican voter here. He's got this swagger that makes you say like, it's gonna be fine. Whatever he's gonna do, he's gonna handle it. Uh, and I just trust him net net. And they like strength. I mean, honestly, like this is why Putin is still so popular in Russia. They like strength, voters like strength. Not all, I realize a lot of people hate both of these men and very good reasons on the Putin side. Um, in DeSantis, you could see the opposite. Like despite the fact that he wanted us to perceive him as a strong man, and he was to some extent in COVID, when he got out there on the presidential debate field and stage, he started to waver. He gave that weird statement to Tucker Carlson on, a, on his position in Ukraine and then immediately walked back when he got hit by the more neocon wing of the party for saying something they thought was asinine. And he didn't just give up, mm, this is how I feel, which is a Trump move. You know, he showed unsteadiness. And even on the debate stage, he seemed a little too afraid to attack, attack, attack. He didn't seem to like get in anybody's face. Now that's not his style, but I'm just saying there was a telegraphing almost on a subliminal level of a layer of timidity that I don't think people wanna see in their president.